Is the need of solar diversion systems dead? That means EV chargers that divert excess solar energy into your car, but also systems that divert excess solar energy into your immersion heater to heat a hot water cylinder. Many years, companies have been marketing these systems as a way of getting the most out of your solar system. Well, in modern installs, modern solar and battery installs, are these products completely pointless? And should they still be sold to people who have a modern system installed these days? Well, there's still some people who on previous systems will benefit from that, and we're gonna be talking about that as well in this video, but mainly we're gonna be talking about the reasons why I think that these products are no longer needed. Now, there's two main arguments against solar diversion systems, but the one main point I have is that you can go on Octopus Intelligent. In fact, one of the companies that markets heavy about charging your car off your sunshine actually promote that they can do that, but they can also be on Octopus Intelligent. Octopus Intelligent means that you can charge your car at 7.5p off peak with energy, but you get paid 15p for export. Now, during the 7.5p, you can charge your car. You could, if you wanted, charge your home storage batteries or heat your hot water tank. Now, you do all of these things if you're an Octopus Intelligent and force as much export back to the grid as possible, because you're gonna get paid 15 pence a kilowatt to export, which means you're making 7.5p just to put that energy back to the grid. So it's pointless using that excess solar. You're wasting 7.5p profit. Now, I've already done a dedicated video about Octopus Intelligent. Go and see that top right if you haven't already. If you just want the short, snappy thing, go to evnick.com forward slash energy, tell you a bit about the tariff, but also there's a code on there where you can split a hundred pound with me if you sign up to Octopus Energy as a new customer. Now, if you can't get good export, then it might still be beneficial for you to get a solar diversion system. However, if you're getting a brand new solar system and you can follow my solar journey over at evnick.com forward slash solar, I've gone for the whole systems, testing systems, and I've got a whole system that I've had installed over by Heatable. But on my system, I guarantee you that you'll need a battery. All systems, if you're having solar, you need a battery. If you're having a battery, why would you put your hot water, uh, your, your excess solar, sorry, into your hot water system or into your car when you could have a double peak tariff where you could use the off peak energy to heat that hot water or charge your car? And during the day where you're paying peak electricity, which is the most expensive electricity, by the way, you use that to to recharge your battery from your solar. That would make way more sense. That way you're getting rid of that peak curve in your in your thing. Now, if you picked a battery that's too small and you're still exporting back to the grid, then you could consider getting a new battery, which is quite pricey, or a solar diversion might still be the win for you. Now, if you've got solar, you've got battery, and you've got an EV, you're logically next gonna start looking at heat pumps. Now, I'm doing a series on heat pumps, Go and check that out if you want. But Optimus Energy did my survey and they offered me what is known as an eddy, which is a hot water diverter from a company called My Energy. Now, I had a bit of an argument with Octopus, um, kind of, well, not an argument. We, we kind of had a disagreement that I don't think they should be offering eddy to customers who are getting heat pumps when they've got storage batteries and they know they've got storage batteries because at best, that immersion heater, run off your solar, is going to be 100% efficient, which means at absolute best, you're going to not send it back to the grid, but it's going to heat your hot water tank at 100% efficiency. And why is this a bad idea? Well, you might as well charge your battery instead, and then later on, run your heat pump to heat your hot water. Because your heat pump might only be 200% efficient, but it's better than that 100% efficiency. And it makes more sense to run the heat pump to heat the water than the immersion heater, especially if you've got a battery, because you can set the timer on the, on the heat pump to work when the battery is more likely to be full or when uh, the, the solar, it might actually export back to the grid because your battery might be full. You can time all this in with your heat pump to work side by side with your solar and that would make way more sense because it would improve your efficiency but also mean that you're getting the most out of your solar without diverting it back to the grid and also that your battery would then be empty again to be able to be refilled back up by any excess solar later on. Now one customer that should definitely get a solar diversion system if they haven't got one already are people who've got solar but they're on an old fit system if you're on an old fit system deemed export then making use of all your solar is a no-brainer you don't want any of that going back to the grid now my personal preference would be buy a battery and if you've still got some going back back to the grid which is very unlikely then 
think think about getting one of these solar diversion systems. Now, a solar diversion system is a lot cheaper than buying a battery, but a battery will have other paybacks over a solar diversion system. But if you are getting a new EV charger and it's your first EV, or you're getting a hot water cylinder tank installed, and you're on fit deemed export, then yes, maybe consider one of these solar diversion systems. Now I'm interested to hear from the community. Are my feelings around this flawed? Let me know down below in the comments. And have I got my calculations right about how I think the heat pump and a solar diversion system should work? I really want to know from you, the community. I'm always happy to be corrected. So let me know down below in the comments. If you want to learn about my heat pump journey, getting a heat pump with Octopus Energy, check out the playlist here. If you want to learn about solar, then check out this one here. Thanks very much. I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.